I was walking the dike and all of a sudden we heard the whistle blow, everyone ran. I think everyone still believed we could hold the water back. The water was now up halfway over the wheels when I got out of the building. Cars submerged and all you'd see is an antenna. Pretty soon you saw, you saw smoke coming off a building. You thought, that can't be possible. I basically fell on the floor and sobbed. I don't know that anybody anticipated what happened to Grand Forks. It was all gone. I mean, what do you do? It was a city affair. It was the largest evacuation of, of, of an urban area since Atlanta during the Civil War. There was a time there that I think all of our spirits were broken. And uh, now as we've emerged from this terrible disaster, I see people that are looking to the future. It's a great town, and uh, I just don't want to give it up. I'm ready to get cooking. I think that we can rebuild this town and make it better than ever. This is our home. This is where our memories are. This is where we want to stay. Grand Forks has survived. Now you will see Grand Forks succeed. It's just all so overwhelming. Never in our wildest dreams did I expect this, never. I have seen rescue workers working around the clock even as they lost their own homes. These people are so great. Where do you begin to thank No them? matter what you have lost, what you have saved and strengthened and shown to the world is infinitely better. Abandoned dikes crumbling beneath their machinery. Our region that is simply unparalleled and unprecedented. Up until I think it was Friday, April 18th, I think everyone still believed we could we could hold the water back. We've had a strategy of containment, trying to keep the water back, that is no longer working. And we were starting to hear news that hey, the water might be coming over the dike. I was walking the dike, and all of a sudden we heard the whistle blow, and everyone. Ran. I think it was projected to crest at 49 feet and it ended up at 54 feet. Good evening. Flooding in the Northern Valley has become an unprecedented disaster as most of Grand Forks and East Grand Forks have been evacuated. You kind of panic. What do you do? And just grab my stuff and, and drove away. It was a city of fear. I mean, we had one thing, the flood, and is Grand Forks gonna, gonna, gonna burn? And pretty soon you saw smoke coming off a building. You thought, that can't be possible. You're looking at a live shot of smoke pouring from downtown Grand Forks. I basically fell to the floor and sobbed. It just hit me so hard. These buildings that you knew were not there anymore. We had three buildings downtown, and one completely burned to the ground. First Financial Center uh, across the street from First National sustained uh, heavy damage. And I still get emotional about it. Uh, you could look down and you could see the, you could see the fire. I don't know that anybody anticipated what happened to Grand Forks, but that next morning, we were taking customer calls out of our 15 Broadway location. John and I got up and we were at 15 Broadway and we were answering calls because all of our systems were available, our accounting systems were up and running, and then we were able to even go around to some of the refugee camps in the region, the Red River Valley, with a, with a motorhome that we converted to a mobile, mobile banking. It was the largest evacuation of, of, of an urban area since Atlanta during the Civil War. There were $2 billion worth of damage here, the highest per capita in the history of the United States. I believe in our people, and I believe together we will all pull out of this, and our city will be stronger. We're going to make it through this, we're going to rebuild this town, and it'll be better than ever. It was all gone. I mean, what do you do? It was, it was crazy. Very fast-paced, a lot of things going on all at the same time. And all we were doing was trying to support one another so we could make sure customers were taken care of. We supported them in every way we possibly could. And then on the flip side, they dedicated their summer to working away from their families. They made sure my family was taken care of. They helped bring contractors online to help get my house back in order so that I could focus on the company. And I won't forget that. You know, we've added a lot of people, a lot of different locations, but the culture, the sentiment, the focus, has remained consistent. Take care of your families, and we take care of our customers. Those are our two top priorities. It was a stressful time, but it was it was fun to see everybody come together and work together to make it make it happen and get us back to where we are today. A lot of you who've been very very brave and courageous. Water cannot wash that away, and fire cannot burn that away, and a blizzard cannot freeze that away. 
we continue to draw on our experiences of that disaster and how we prepare and protect our systems at Alaris today. We're not the only bank that's had a fire. We're not the only bank that's had a flood. We're probably one of the few banks that has had a flood, a fire, and then an evacuation of a town. Having gone through that in a strange way, I think made us stronger. It's not about survival, it's about succeeding. And I think we succeeded. I mean, I would not be in the position I am without the help I got from the bank. Where we are today from where we were is a heck of a story.